At the moment, if you're a social and eco-conscious tourist who just landed at Cairo International with a backpack or a small cabin size bag and want to take public transport to your hotel or Airbnb in downtown Cairo, your options may be limited. Despite Cairo Airport being one of the major international airports worldwide, it's still far behind most global hubs that have some form of rail connection to the nearest city if not a major train station connecting to other railway networks, intercity railway networks. Why does Cairo Airport only offer several types of taxis for arriving passengers right at the terminal? Why do users of public buses have to first take a shuttle bus to a desolate bus terminal that is weirdly placed far out of sight of any of the other passenger terminals? While there are public transit options, in theory, they're quite honestly not so good. If your flight landed at Cairo International on a weekday between 6am and 8pm and you happen to be going to downtown Cairo, you might be in luck. Then you can catch one of the air-conditioned buses run by the Cairo Transport Authority, the CTA, or Mwaslat Masr, which is a private company that runs buses on a concession basis with the CTA. After this video, I recommend that you watch fellow YouTubers Gus from Egypt Travel Adventures and Eve from the Lemongrass and Sunshine to see their in-person experiences arriving at Cairo International, Terminals 2 and 3, and heading from there to the bus terminal using the free internal shuttle bus service. From the bus terminal, they then took two different air-conditioned buses heading to the Tahrir Square. From the video, I can tell that Gus ended up in a CTA-operated route, probably the 356, going from Cairo Airport to Tahrir via Heliopolis, Apaseya, Vamara and Ramses. Eve, on the other hand, ended up on a Mawaslat Masr minibus route. While the marquee wasn't visible in the video, I could tell, since I've been in this bus before myself, that it was the mini route heading to Zemalik via Abdel Manam Riyadh Square. Abdel Manam Riyadh Square, for those who don't know, is adjacent to Tahrir Square, it's oh, just a, a minute walk from Tahrir Square. However, if you've just missed the air-conditioned bus, your other option will be the so-called regular bus which Yves and his, fa and his family almost took. While the regular CTA bus could be much more readily available, it does get much more crowded during the day and it could be uncomfortable to use any time between April and November. Basically, in the warmer half of the year. Not to mention that the vast majority of these buses do not have any signage in Latin characters, except perhaps for the actual bus number, which won't really help a first-time rider, and hence non-Arabic speakers might have to ask other passengers and or the driver to make sure they don't hop into the wrong bus. According to local legend, one of the many reasons why Egypt lost its bid to, the, to host the FIFA 2010 World Cup was due to the workers arriving at Cairo airport only to end up haggling with taxi drivers who at the time didn't have functioning taxi meters. I couldn't find any written resources to back this up. However, Egypt's readiness to host the World Cup was marked as very good on the official FIFA inspectors report, which is short of South Africa's excellent rating. And eventually, Egypt's bid spectacularly failed and received no votes at all from the FIFA Executive Commission. In fact, the local press ended up dubbing the whole affair as Sufrud Mundiel, or the World Cup Zero Scandal. Despite that, many good things did come out of the failed bid, and thankfully, without having to foot the extremely expensive bill that South Africa's government ended up with to host the 2010 FIFA Men's World Cup. The aftermath of Sufrud Mundiel led to investments infrastructure that then led to a boom in Egypt's capabilities at hosting sporting events, conferences and international affairs. It has also led to the rapid introduction of the unfortunately short-lived yellow cabs and was followed by the massive renewal and replacement effort of most of Cairo's famous black and white taxis with newer vehicles that came along with functioning digital taxi meters. It has also partly induced the effort to link all of the different passenger terminals in Cairo Airport with an automated people mover, making it much easier for passengers to transfer between terminals and other facilities at the airport. However, most of these efforts stopped short when it came to improving public transport facilities, 
connecting the city to the airport. And while there were plans to extend the third line metro to Cairo airport, they were later cancelled due to the so-called cost considerations. As of April 2021, nothing has really changed and we're not sure if the metro, if the airport metro project will be resurrected or replaced by the so-called BRT or Bus Rapid Transit Line, which I couldn't I could find very little indications on the websites of local news outlets. So as it stands, the few air-conditioned buses connecting Cairo Airport to Heliopolis and downtown are the only environmentally friendly way to get from the airport to town in Cairo. And if your flight landed too early in the day or, late at, or too late at night, your only option is taking a cab or a limousine, which is basically a premium form of taxis, both of which are way more expensive than a bus fare. The gap left by lagging public transit also explains why a vast number of taxis and limousines operate out of Cairo Airport, all of them competing for clients. Some of the other reasons that led to the proliferation of airport taxis and limousine services boil down to two other major and different aspects. First, each tourism industry has, for decades, relied on selling so-called tourist packages, basically selling a specific set of activities that include accommodation, pre-arranged tourist bus connections to and from the airport, and connections to other tourist destinations and or resorts. Hence, there hasn't really been any incentive in the past to make the public transit system tourist friendly, especially by providing bilingual signage and user-friendly bus infrastructure such as signposts and maps at bus stops. Second, the, reason, the other reason why there hasn't been much focus on developing a city airport transit link goes back to a more conventional reason. Cairo has such a heavy reliance on the private vehicle as a form of transport, despite all, the, all statistics that point to the majority of people not owning their own cars. Municipal authorities, however, invest much more in roads and parking for private vehicles than they do for public transport. Since the tourism industry has historically been geared towards package tourism and public transport was for the longest duration of time associated with the working classes, public buses were pushed to an isolated section of the airport, quite literally. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any documentation or news articles about this, but the Cairo Airport bus terminal was removed and relocated from its previous location right in front of Terminal 1 to a desolate location that is only now reachable via a shuttle bus service. While you can walk to the bus terminal, unless you know your way, you might get lost as there isn't enough signage or even sidewalks for pedestrians hoping to walk from any of the terminals to the bus terminal. While this formula might have worked in the past, this is not the case anymore, and Egypt is slowly adapting to the new global tourism trends, where travelers now look for more flexible and individually crafted experiences by, looking, by booking their own flights, accommodations, and figuring out their own way through the city, using public transport or ride-sharing apps. These tourists, unlike many package tourists, cherish the direct interaction and blending in with the locals and are keen to avoid overpriced tourist cabs or limousines. Things are also changing in Cairo. More young people and in Egypt and globally prefer to move to somewhere central that is served by metro and dense public transport networks, rather than live in the districts and suburbs poorly served by public transport. In fact, a private company called Mosla Masr has banked on this trend and is now operating an ever-expanding network of air-conditioned buses that purposefully interchange with the metro and are fully trackable via Google Maps with live updates to their schedules, smart ticketing and other amenities on board their buses. However, despite all these efforts, they still fall short. To, to wait for a bus that takes you to the bus terminal, only having to wait there for the next bus heading to town is not okay for an international airport in a major global metropolis like Cairo. The Cairo airport authorities, realizing how inadequate the situation is, have increased the number of shuttle buses operating within the airport. However, a better solution that wouldn't cost much really is to move the bus station to the parking lot next to the air mall. That way, you get two birds with one stone. The bus terminal would be right next to the already existing and frequent Mini Metro Autopated People Mover, and passengers can hang out at the mall nearby 
withdraw local currency, have a coffee or a bite to eat before they board their buses. Not to mention, the bus terminal would then be right next to Terminal 1, which is mainly serviced by regional and budget airlines, making even more sense to move the bus terminal there. As for the former parking lot, well, by now there's plenty of parking spots around Terminals 1, 2 and 3 and a massive multi-level car park that happens to also be serviced by, you guessed it, the Minimeter Automated People Mover. Now, to not just illustrate but help with the absurdity of the situation, I'll be, share, I'll be making a step-by-step -step handout guide showing how to get from the airport to central Cairo. This will be linked in the description box below as soon as it's available. In the meantime, if you like my video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have some change to spare, subscribe to my Patreon. It's work in progress, but I do aim to put more focus on Patreon exclusive content and other features in the near future. For now, thank you for watching my video. Goodbye.